Yeah. I can't hear it. A couple more minutes. Yeah. I'm still not on, preacher. You switched the all the way on? Yeah, it's green. No, but all, all the way on. Switch it all the oh, way on. Oh, I see. Yeah, as far as you go. Yeah. Maybe I missed the connection back there. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it? Am I on now? I still don't think so. Yes, I can hear it. All right. Nobody's in there. Just need one person. Turn it on a little early so that. Yeah. So about. This weight's about five. Sure. Sure. <coughs> So sluggish, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. <coughs> Excuse me for this the cough. <coughs> <coughs> 
dealing with a fresh cold. Uh, and good morning, everyone. This is Brother Crump for Sherwood Bible Church South. Uh, and uh, for Sunday morning Bible study. And for the, from the beginning of the year, we've been uh, looking at hermeneutics, so the method of study in the Bible. And because in a, these man-made so pseudo Christian organizations, they have established their own different methods and They'll quote 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And their method, most, most popular method, is uh, dividing uh, 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 Old Testament with New Testament. Well, that's not, uh, it's not an effective way to look at the word of God. The most effective way to look at the word of God is a dispensational approach. And uh, we have an approach approach. We have on the board here uh, covenant theology, which is uh, there. Yeah, most of them uh, under that umbrella, they will say that uh, there's only one church in the Bible, there's only one gospel, and so therefore there's only uh, no need to divide anything other than the Old Testament, New Testament. Well, that gets you in a lot of trouble because if you look at Numbers twenty three nineteen, God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of man that He should repent. Had He said it, shall He not do it? Had he spoken, it should not make it good. Well, if you are under that reform uh, uh, confusion, which is in confusion, you would have an expectation, you should have an expectation of receiving everything that God had promised people in those different dispensations. And if you associate yourself with that church, which we spoke of in the last two, three months, uh, the church in the wilderness, which Stephen has told us about in uh, Acts 7, 38 and 39, uh, that church in the wilderness, which uh, the spokesperson of that church is Moses. Why is the sound going up and down? I can hear it. It, it's, it seems like it's more effective when I bow my head and then when I lift up my head, it's a different sound. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I was asking a fellow recently about his, uh, he happens to be some, I don't know if he's agnostic of what, you know, I haven't really, really, really uh, had an extended conversation with him because he's, he, he doesn't want to uh, engage in uh, this. In fact, he's asked me not to discuss religion with him. I said, well, I won't discuss religion with you. I'll discuss the Bible. How about that? <laughs> so that's sort of intimidating to him. But he, uh, he says his wife is a Roman Catholic. Well, what if a person, you know, not Roman Catholics in particular, but if you're a Methodist, a Baptist, Episcopalian, if you're Jehovah's Witness, if you're a Church of God in Christ, what if you would open your Bible and ask God, where is that church mentioned in the Bible. Well, God, none of those churches are mentioned in the Bible. Those are man-made organizations that use phrases like uh, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, so they say the church of God in Christ. Or oh, uh, they will use the phrases in the Bible and name that church from that phrase. But God has named three churches in the Bible, the church in the wilderness of uh, Acts 7, 38, 39, and the spokesperson for that church, of course, is Moses. And then the church, uh, uh, the prophesied Messianic church in Matthew 16, 18, which all of these, virtually all of these man-made organizations claim that they are that church, and that church is of, for today, which is not so, because God said it's not so. Uh, upon this rock I'll build my church in the days of hell shall not prevail against it, and they repeat that and teach people that, but all, everything that God, that is not a man that he shouldn't lie, he has promised those people that, and we'll get into that, that whatever he has said concerning that church in Matthew 16, 18, he said he will do it. And the same holds true for the church, which is his body. Whatever he said concerning that church, whatever he has told someone, his spokesperson, to tell the world concerning that church, which is the Apostle Paul, he will do it. it that's, it's that simple. So what, 
Well, wouldn't one just want to know, ask God, which church should I belong to? Should I belong to the church of the wilderness? Or should I belong to the church of Matthew 16, 18? Or should I belong to the church which is his body? And the way I would belong to those churches, I, God would tell me I, he has done certain things so that I can identify myself as a member of that organization, of that church. But let's look at this church, which is called the church which is his body. We'll begin this study, the church which is his body, not begin it, but continue this church which is his body to identify the person in that church or to identify yourself if you are in that church, you would read Romans 1. one Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. For I long to see you that I might impart upon you some spiritual gift. So in this church, this spokesperson for the church, the Apostle Paul, is telling people, saying people, in this letter to the church at Rome, that he wants to impart upon them some spiritual gifts to the end, you may be established. You would know who you are and have an expectation of spiritual gifts from this spokesperson, excuse me, from this spokesperson who is telling us about the expectation of being in the church with his body. Spiritual gifts, you should not be have an expectation of material gifts, material gain. That's what he's saying. Verse 12, that is, that I may be comforted together with you, no, by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So if you're in this church, which is called the church, which is his body, you would be of the same mutual faith as the Apostle Paul. You wouldn't be of the faith of the Apostle Paul and of Peter also, or Moses, and Paul, you wouldn't combine the both of them, you would, which some of these people do, and it causes confusion and, 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 and people are disappointed. And we'll go about to show how these people are being disappointed when we compare the church, which is his body, with other, these other two churches, Church in the Wilderness and the Messianic Prophesied Church of Matthew 16, 18. So let's go to Romans chapter 8. The spokesperson, the Apostle Paul, concerning healing. Mind you, he wants to impart upon me and people in the church, which is his body, spiritual gifts. But what about healing? Healing is in the Bible. Jesus healed. Peter healed. What about these miracles? They're in the Bible. It's in that church in the wilderness. Elijah would perform miracles. Moses performed miracles. Are, they, are those miracles in the church, which is his Bible? Romans chapter 8, verses 8, 18 through 23. <coughs> Excuse me. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The suffering. I'm a, I have a cold. Well, it, you know, it's not, not a suffering with the cold, but I have a cold. If those sign gifts were, 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 were up to date, somebody could pray for me. There's someone at the door. S someone could pray for me, and I could just get rid of this cold. They could lay hands on me. That's what James says in 5. He let the elders of the church lay hands on them that are sick. But that's a different church that James is speaking to. It's not the church which is his body. What James is saying is absolutely true. And those sign gifts will work. But when James says, if let the elders of the church lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But is Paul telling us that he can simply lay hands on the sick and cure my cold? Because I'm in the church which is his body. Continuing, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know 
that the whole creation groaneth and drave to build in pain together until now the whole creation, this church, which is his body, groaneth and travaileth in pain right now. People in the body of Christ have problems, physical problems. They get sick. I'm sick. I'm a member of the church, which is his body. And I'm sick with a cold. Oh, now go back to 22 again. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Now, I don't, I, I, I understand this and I believe this <coughs> because the Apostle Paul is my spokesperson. So I don't have to go to a, 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 somebody and ask them to lay their hands on me to get rid of my cold or pray for me to get rid of my cold. That's superstitious nonsense. That's the way that con game works. They pull this information out of the Bible, miracles, and apply it to their organization, say, this is going to happen to you. And it never happens because people are confused about the three churches. Which one of these churches should you just belong to? And you can pick any one of them you want to belong to, but you should have an expectation because God is not a man and he should lie. You should have an expectation of those sign gifts. 23. And not only they, not only they, people that are not in the body of Christ, but we also, ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of which to know the redemption of our body. This body that's corruptible. We're waiting for it because we get sick and die. But let's compare that with Mark. This other church, this church of Matthew 16, 18, this is Jesus. Speaking this truth concerning what we focus on are people being healed, or people can be people be healed in this church. Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. Jesus speaking to people who are in the church. That prophesied Messianic church in Matthew 16, 18. These people, Jesus is telling them. 14 through 18. Afterward he, afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as he said at meat and embraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth and not shall be damned. Note 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Nobody in my church that I'm in is but will lay hands on me and so I get rid of this cold. And yet Jesus is telling people in this church that they will lay hands on me after they come out of the water, mind you. They will be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And of course, speak with new tongues, it means new language. It's not, it's not babbling. But there's a difference between this church, the prophesied Messianic church is Matthew 16, 18, and the church, which is his body, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, which we are working on, we have been speaking on for the last three, about three weeks. And we continue to compare the church, which is his body, with these other churches. This is true. And this happened. <coughs> no much. Chapter 8. I don't think that the holding this has made a difference with the uh, sound. Preaching. I don't, I don't think there's been a difference in the sound. It's inconsistent. It's been All right. Uh, Romans chapter 8. And note, the Apostle Paul, who wrote this, who gave us this information, 
All the scriptures given by the inspiration of God is a profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction. So he's speaking to save people who are in the church, which is his body. And when, when people today lie about these miracles of talking in tongues, what we just read about these gifts, you know, after you came out of the water, you see. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out demons? They shall speak with new tongues. God said that and he meant it. Jesus said he meant everyone. He meant that. But you, you should have an expectation of that happening in your life. Not somebody tell you it's not happening because you're not, of, 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 you, your belief is not sound enough. It's not strong enough. You don't pray enough. Or you don't, some kind of excuse. It's, there is no reason for it not happening in your life if you believe the narrative that Jesus just said. But if you believe what these organizations tell you, you're frustrated because you're praying and you're begging for healing and it doesn't happen. But when, what does God say about the church, about a person in the church which is his body? Concerning those physical healings and so forth. When we use our mind now, <coughs> Romans 8.32. He that spared not his own son, but delivering him up for us all, for us all, these people in the body of Christ. How shall he not with him, with Jesus, also feel you freely give us all things? Well, I'd like relief from this cold. But what, the, what I did to get relief from this cold, I didn't, even, I didn't ask anybody to put their hands on me because I know the doctrine. I bought some cold medication this morning. Is it? Because I, I, I can't, I, I believe, I believe what God says concerning my sickness, my, my, my cold. Is it? I bought some medication. Oh, I'd go to the doctor, you see, to have a resolution of my physical condition. I don't go to the, the preacher or some pastor, you know, the preacher, go to these reverends and they're going to lay hands on you and tell you you're going to be healed and you're never healed. Here's the way they work that lie. They call it the word of faith people. That's straight up out of hell. We compare Romans chapter 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Relief from this cold. I'm in the body of Christ. Give me relief from this cold. They already told me the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. Mark 11. <coughs> the con game works because People haven't heard the solution to the problem, to the deception. They believe God. That's the solution. And that's what we're doing. We're contrasting what God says to one church and what he says to another church. And both of them are true. But which church are you in? Are you in the church in the wilderness, the prophesied Messianic church of Matthew 16, 18? Or are you in the church which is his body? And a lot of these people claim we are the body of Christ. And they're telling people that they can be healed. And they're telling people they should be water baptized. And they're in the body of Christ. But well, that's not what God says. Here's the way they work that lab out. He's going to give you something. He's going to work a special miracle in your life. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what, th what, things, so, what things soever you desire, when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you should have them. This is a common grip with the con game of word of faith, people. You see, it's first. God says that. Read it again. 
Therefore I say unto you, what is Jesus? What things soever you desire when you pray and, and pray, believe that you receive them and you should have them. <coughs> and they read this verse to, to, to the naive people, and you see all you have to do is pray for it. And tithe properly, or come to Bible study properly, and you can receive it. The problem is you're not doing your part. That's why you haven't got the blessings. But what if we looked at this verse and compared to who he's talking to and see who is Jesus talking to and why does he tell him what he just said in 24? Let's start at 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called into remembrance, said unto him, Jesus, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus knowing it, and Jesus answering and saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall say unto the mountain, this mountain, be thy removed, and thou shalt, and, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said have come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things, for whatsoever, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you should have them. But the con man won't read verses 20 through 23 because it interferes with their lie, their deception. But Jesus is telling the truth. I mean, this is real what Jesus is saying. And we continue to compare this. Romans. Chapter 10. We're just going through the Apostle Paul's epistles to see if I'm of the same mutual faith as him. <coughs> Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. <coughs> Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for, for Israel is that they might be saved. It's interesting. You belong to Seventh day Adventist Church, the Hebrew Israelite Church, and you claim that you're saved today, but you still have to keep the law. But the Apostle Paul says, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They know where the salvation lies. But they've ignored it. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What is that? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Yet they tell you that, yeah, we believe, and indeed Jesus died for their sin. But you have to do your part. <coughs> you still have to keep the law. Even if you can't keep all of it, you have to keep it as much as you can. But that's not what God says concerning the law. He says all of it. Compare it. Galatians. Chapter 3. We're not compare, but contrast it with Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Oh, foolish Galatians, who would bewitch you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? My apostle Paul is telling these saved people they still want to say that Christ died for their sins, and I believe all of that, but yet we still have to keep the law, keep some of the rituals in the law. It's going on today. Seven-day Adventists, Hebrew Israelites, the world, Jamal's world, the Jehovah's Witness, they still have to they claim that you have to do your part. Two and continue. This is only what I learned of you. You receive you to spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. 
Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the spirit, as the apostle Paul, and work of miracles among you, doeth it by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scriptures foreseen that God, who justified the heathen through faith, preaches before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then, they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many of, uh, as of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. We, last week we spoke of the three phases of the law, the, 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 the law of, the, of, the, of, the, of Exodus 20, and then the civil laws of uh, 21 through about 23, and then the, the, the ceremonial laws of uh, 23 through 24, 5, and 6. You have to keep all of those and continue. But then no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is heavenly for the just to live by faith, not by what you do, burning candles or keeping the Ten Commandments. But that's what they teach. You have to do your part, is what they say. But that's not what a person in the church, which is his body, is taught. Twelve. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is not of faith. It's of works. Romans 11. Romans chapter 11. Note this, this, this sexual issue here. <coughs> Verses 1 through 6. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of, this, of the seed of Abraham of this tribe of Benjamin. Wait a minute. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Roman Catholicism said they have replaced Israel. But God says he hasn't cast away his people. To it continue, God had not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not that the scripture said, Elijah, how he make an intercession for God, to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they had killed thine prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith that? What saith the answer to, of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed down to the knee of Baal. Baal worship from a Catholicism, and most of it is practiced by these man-made European Christian organizations. They call different denominations. Even so, then at this present time, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. Jesus did his part. Now you have to do your part. But that's not what, if it be grace, then there's no more works. This is true. And what people teach you in Seven Day Adventures or Hebrew Israelites, they say this is not true. Because you have to do your part. Because Jesus, Jesus did his part, but now you have to do your part. Let's look at this dietary stuff. 
should I eat pork chops if I'm in this church which isn't writing? The church in the wilderness, you shouldn't eat pork chops. Or the church, the Messianic church in Matthew 16, 18, you shouldn't eat pork chops. You shouldn't eat bacon. Huh? But if you are in this church which isn't writing, <coughs> Does that apply to your soul? Romans 14, 1. 1 through 5. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believes that he made all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God had received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth and followeth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. But let's compare that with back to Galatians. See, in this church, which is his body, nobody's condemning anybody about what they eat. You can eat the black eyed peas with the okra or not. You eat what you want to eat. You know, God is not going to, God is not going to do anything to me about eating what I eat. But they tell you can't eat pork. Is that right? Galatians. Well, it's true for the church in the wilderness and the messianic. The Vedic Church of Matthew 16, 18. Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Let's compare that. Can you eat? In the church, 8 through 11. How be it then, when you knew God, you did service unto him, unto them, which by nature know God's. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you design and to be in bondage? And it's religion, religion. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Colossians 2. In this church, which is his body, speaking to those rites and rituals and those dietary laws. Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honoring to the satisfying of the flesh. There's another narrative that uh, the apostle speaks uh, about this nonsense. Where they're trying to, it's not nonsense, they're trying to transfer the dietary laws to the church, which is his body. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and uh, commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature with God is good is nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. In this church, in this church, everything, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. But you can't do that with that church in the wilderness, no pork. And at one time they were vegetarians. But you can't eat pork. You can't eat fish that have no scales. 
the dietary laws. But in this church, which is his body, where every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Romans 15, 4. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So all the Bible is good for us. But all the Bible is not about us. For a person that's in the church, which is his body. 15.8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, to confirm, <coughs> to certify, <coughs> excuse me, to certify, the, confirm what it says, the promises made unto the fathers. Hmm. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians five. Romans fifteen eight. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises. Me unto the fathers. <clears throat> in the church which is his body, the spokesperson, the apostle Paul, says in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 through 17, for the love of God, the love of Christ constrains me, constrains us, because we thus just judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Evidently, the narrative said people in Christ are not in another church, which is his prophesied messianic church in 1618. I wonder if that's clear or not. That's what's said. Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Romans 15, 13 through 20. And the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written a more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the circumcision, to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may glory through Christ to Jesus Christ and those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ had wrought, had not wrought by me, 
to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about into Eliquium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should be <coughs> built upon another man's foundation. <coughs> <coughs> From that, from that position, we'll continue to study with what is the gospel of Christ that Paul is speaking of. What is the gospel of Christ that a person in the body of Christ should believe? Or should they believe that the gospel of Christ is the gospel which Christ preached to the twelve and to Israel? Or is that the gospel which Moses preached? Concerning the children of Noah's daughters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity once again to simply read your information. And we, we, we pray that, uh, that those hearing this information would be like the Bereans that receive the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily. Wherever those things are so, that's all. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.